This lesson discusses using pregmatch for form validation. The topics include how does pregmatch work, why use pregmatch, and how can you use pregmatch to validate form data. Looking at the first code example, we see a pattern on line 7 which can be used to validate a house number. It's important to understand the nature of the data that you plan to validate. In this case, we would expect that the house number would be from 1 to 16 letters, numbers, or spaces. Accordingly, in parentheses, we represent letters and numbers using backslash W. We then include the OR symbol and backslash S to represent spaces. Following this, we tell PHP exactly how many of these characters we are expecting to find. We use the curly braces, the numbers 1, 16, to indicate a range from 1 to 16 total. We use the circumflex and the dollar sign to represent the fact that the search string should only include letters, numbers, and spaces, and furthermore, it should only be from 1 to 16 characters. On line 10, we have an array of test data with some good and some bad house numbers. On lines 13 and below, we display the results. Notice on line 17, we are using the pregmatch command to perform the check. pregmatch accepts a pattern and a string as arguments. It then returns a Boolean true or false, indicating whether or not the string properly matches the pattern. This can be used for validation purposes in that if the match is successful, we know that the user has successfully entered a proper house number. If the match is not successful, we know that the data should be considered invalid. Moving now to the browser, let's examine the results. So as you can see, the first, third, and fourth examples tested properly, whereas the bad house number in tags did not test properly. This means that the second example would be considered an invalid house number. The second example is very similar, except in this case, we are creating a pattern which validates a Canadian postal code. Again, it's very important to have an understanding of the nature of the data you plan to validate. In this case, the format of a Canadian postal code is very specific. It is letter, number, letter, space, number, letter, number. We use the square brackets A-Z to represent a letter. Again, we use the square brackets 0-9 to represent a number. Bear in mind that we could also use backslash D to perform a similar function. On line 10, we have an array of test data, some representing good Canadian postal codes, others representing bad postal codes. Again, on lines 13 through the end, we display the results using the pregmatch command to check to see if the string matches the pattern. Moving now to the browser, let's have a look at the results. So as you can see, the first and the fourth examples tested valid. The second, third, and fifth examples were invalid according to the pattern. The third example is very similar, except in this case, we're validating a U.S. postal code. U.S. postal codes follow the format of five numbers, optionally followed by a dash and four more numbers. In order to represent the five numbers, we could use square brackets 0-9, or we can use backslash D. Backslash D represents digits. We follow this in curly braces with the number 5, which tells us we are looking for exactly 5 digits at the beginning of the pattern, and this is represented by the circumflex. We then put in parentheses that which we wish to represent as optional. We have a minus sign followed by backslash D and a quantity of 4. Notice the question mark following the parentheses. The question mark is used to represent either zero or one possibilities, which effectively means that anything inside parentheses is optional. Again, on line 10, we have an array of test data. On lines 13 through the end, we display the results using the pregmatch command to test the string against the pattern. Moving now to the browser, 
Let's have a look at the results. So as you can see in this example, the third and the fifth examples passed the test. The first, second, and fourth examples do not. Now, putting it all together, we might have something like this, a web form. Let's now check to see if our bad house number checks out OK. So as you can see, the bad number fails the validation. The validation message should reflect the nature of the validation error. This gives users a chance to correct their mistakes. Let's put in a good house number. Notice that validates OK. Again, for the postal code, the same thing. If we put in bad values, this will fail the validation. We see a message informing the user of the expected format. So if we put in a good number, this validates OK. And again, following the Canadian postal code system, this validates OK as well. If the number is too long, that fails the validation. Looking now at the code for this, you can see we're using dollar underscore get to obtain the information from the form. This is discussed in more detail on the chapter which discusses web forms. So lines 13 through 15, we get the house number. On lines 17 through 19, we get the postal code. The validation occurs on lines 22 through 30. So you'll notice that we are using the patterns which we discussed earlier. The first pattern, 1 to 16 characters, alphanumeric, or spaces, for the house number. On line 27, we have a combination of the Canadian postal code or the U.S. postal code. So if either or succeeds, we receive a confirmation message. If either fails the validation, the default message, which is described on lines 8 and 9, is displayed instead. Notice that we also assign initial values. Finally, at the end of the file, here is the form. In review, how does pregmatch match work? Pregmatch match accepts a pattern followed by a string and returns a true or false depending on whether the string properly matches the pattern. It then stops after the first match. Why use pregmatch match? Pregmatch match is used when you only need to verify or validate information and where that information has a very complex format, examples being postal codes, phone numbers, and other sorts of data. How can you use pregmatch to validate form data? Number one, determine the nature of the data and the rules that you expect the data to follow. The example that we showed included the formatting of a postal code. Number two, construct the appropriate pattern. Number three, Use the pregmatch statement inside an if statement using the pattern and the user data as arguments. Your program would then proceed in a certain manner if the match was successful. Otherwise, your code might display an appropriate error validation message. This concludes our discussion of using pregmatch for form validation.